We've added a new feature to Thrive Architect called Scroll Behavior. And this feature was originally built to allow for more complex header layouts, but it can also be used for other creative purposes within your landing pages and content. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes. And in this video, let me show you a couple of examples of what you can do with this new scroll behavior feature, and then also give you a tutorial to show you how it works. Let's start by looking at a couple of examples, starting with this landing page here, which has a header at the top. Now, something that has already been possible with our header feature is that when you scroll down the page, the header stays visible. We call this a sticky header, right? Because it sticks to the top of your viewport. And that's fine, that's a feature we've already had, but we noticed that there are some designs and layouts where this just isn't quite enough. For example, here, we have a double header. And it takes up quite a bit of space. So as we're scrolling, it really takes up quite a sizable chunk of the screen. And maybe we want to be a bit more economical with the screen space here. And one way we could do that is by only showing the main part of the header, which is the logo and navigation, and the secondary part with the social links and number, we could leave that at the top. And the new scroll behavior feature allows us to do exactly that. So here is the same page using the new scroll behavior feature and as you can see, we basically leave that secondary ribbon at the top of the screen and it reappears when we get to the, back to the top. But we only scroll the main part of the header. We only keep that sticky. And there are other interesting things we can do. First of all, we can take this even further and make a, a more sophisticated header layout. Here we have a triple header. And here we want to have two parts of the header visible and one part hidden on scroll. And that's also something we can do with one of the features built into the new scroll behavior. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And there's more. We can also determine until where something scrolls on the page. So with the example of this header, we actually leave it behind before we reach the bottom of the page, right? So it only stays sticky for a certain portion of the page. And then my next example is right here as well. Here we have some content. And we have this little chapters box. This could also be maybe a call to action box or a quote. And we want that to be sticky as we move past all of this content. And here again, it doesn't stay sticky for the entire page. It stops scrolling when it reaches the end of this content. Plus, of course, this chapter box, I can actually click on these links to jump to the different chapters like this. And I'm going to show you how that is done using the exact same scroll behavior feature as well. And a final example here is a more marketing and conversion focused example. Here we have a sales page with a video at the top. And we have a fairly typical kind of conversion focused layout here. We have a large heading, then we have a subheading call to action, then the video itself. This is where our sales message would play. And then we have a purchase area. So here we're showing a call to action. We have the add to cart button. We're showing some credit card symbols and some security symbols right here. Now, what we can do with the scroll behavior feature is that as I scroll down this page, part of this call to action area stays visible. Right? So as I'm going through the page, that call to action and the purchase button are always immediately available. This is a great thing to do, especially on long content, on long sales pages, because you can kind of let your visitor browse through the page, read whatever they want to read, read whatever catches their eye. And at the moment where they've seen enough, at the moment where they're convinced, the next step is always immediately visible and immediately available. So these are all things that were built using this new scroll behavior feature. And so let's look at what the feature does and then do a quick deconstruction of how each of these examples was built. So let's start on this landing page. And to start, I wanna show the feature using a button because as you saw, this feature is not restricted to just being used in a header. So even on a button and on many other elements that you can add to your page, you will find this scroll behavior panel among your style settings. And the default is static, which means there's no scroll behavior. And we can turn that to sticky, which gives us a couple of options. At its basic, if you turn something to sticky, it will simply stick to the top of the viewport once it reaches, once the viewport reaches that position, and will, when you scroll back up, stay in its original position again. And there are a few options we can add. So we can, first of all, tell this not to do that on every screen size. So Usually you'll probably want to limit this kind of scroll behavior to large and medium screens because on phones, there's usually just not enough space for this kind of stuff. And that's what we can determine right here. Like which screen size does this happen on? 
We can also set a distance from the top and I'm going to set a relatively generous distance just to show you so that the effect is obvious. And we can choose until when something scrolls. So either to the end of the page, the end of the parent container, so that would be the box it's inside, or when it reaches a specific element. We'll leave this as it is. So let's look at that, save that for now. So now when I scroll down, as you can see, with this roughly 200 pixel distance, this button remains sticky. So that's where it will just be for the entire page until I reach the original position again and it stays in its original position. So that is the scroll behavior options applied to an element on the page. All right, let's make this button static again and look at our header examples. So we'll go to the global options and add a header. And the first one we have is our test header here. And what we have here is if we go to edit this header, you'll see that on the header element itself, we have no scroll behavior because we have two sections that this header is made of. And on the first one, the scroll behavior is static, so none. And on the second one, it is sticky. And that gives us the result that we saw before. So let's save that. So just as a reminder, this is what it looks like, right? That means the second part is sticky, the first part is not. Now let's look at our triple header because that one makes things a bit more complicated and that's where this offset from the top becomes really important. So once again, I will change the header to our triple header right here. Now, if we select the middle section here, make it sticky, and then we select the bottom section and make it sticky, we might think that, oh, that's all it takes, right? So if I save this, the result we get now is that when we scroll, it seems like only the middle section appears. And that's because both of the sections stick to the very top of the screen and one of them covers the other. So that's where the offset from the top comes in. What we need to do is we need to do a bit of like CSS math here. So let me edit the header. The way this is calculated, so we want to offset this header by the exact height of this one, right? And the way this works is we have a minimum height set, which is 79 pixels, and we have to add the padding, the top and bottom padding to that because the padding is added to the minimum height. So that is 11, so that would make 90 pixels. That means that the total height of this section is 90 pixels, so I want to offset this one by 90 pixels. And then also I would want to have this um, only happen on larger screens. So we have this, okay. And that now gives us the desired effect of both sections staying visible on scroll. So next up, let's make them stop at a certain point in the page. We you do this using IDs. So the way this works is when we edit our header, we wanna to go to this section and choose, uh, it should scroll until it reaches another element. I've already added this from the demo before, so I simply given this an ID. It can be any ID, right? It can be header stop, or you can change that to just stop, okay? It has to be a unique ID, stop, or any string of characters you want. And I'll do the same for the second one. I want this to scroll until it reaches stop. And then we want to save that. And now we have to insert an element and give it the ID stop. And that can be any element. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to drop a divider onto this page. I could also choose any heading or any image or whatever. I'm going to drop a divider and I'll go to HTML attributes and give it the ID stop. So now let's reload this and see what happens. So now when we start scrolling down, once we reach this divider, the scrolling will stop. Now, there's also a simpler way to do this that works better in some circumstances, and this here is an example. So let's look at this as our next example. This one is pretty simple. We have on the box itself, so we've selected the box, and on the box, we set the scroll behavior to be 30 pixels from the top, and we simply set it to the end of the parent container. So it remains sticky until it reaches the end of the parent container. What is the parent container? It is whatever element is the next one in the breadcrumbs. So this box is inside this column and we can scroll down to see where this column ends. And it is exactly here where we want this to end, right? So now this box will simply only scroll up and down inside this parent container. Then what do we do about the chapters? This is very similar to the IDs, right? This is just a styled list. And on each of these texts, I have a link which is hash and a name, such as hash chapter one. 
Again, I can define this ID any way I want. I simply have to use the same ID on the place I want that to jump to. So a hash with an ID will jump to that page on the screen. So here we have chapter title one, HTML attributes says chapter one. That's how we make this clickable, right? That's how we make it so that whenever I click on one of these, it jumps to the appropriate title. And then we have our final example with our video sales page. And here, all we've done is we've constructed this call to action section in such a way that it's basically two sections and one of them is suitable to be a sticky ribbon at the top of the screen. So I simply have two sections, both of them with the same background color. So it basically visually looks like one section. And I have the call to action at the add to cart button in a relatively narrow ribbon right here. And this section I've applied the scroll behavior to sticky till the end of the page, nothing special. This section here is static. And that gives us this result that we're looking for. So that gives us a ribbon that stays at the top while the rest of the section stays static on the page. So that's a quick tour with some examples of what you can do with this new scroll behavior feature. And as you can see, this is a very flexible feature. There are many things you can do with this. And I'm really curious to know what you will do with this. So if you have ideas of what you want to build with this, or if you have suggestions of how we can make this even more powerful, I'm really eager to hear about that. So leave a comment below, let us know what you think of this new feature, as well as any feedback and suggestions.